Obadiah chapter 1. Now note here in the Schofield Bible about Obadiah would be, um, I'll just read it. Internal evidence seems to fix the date of Obadiah's ministry in the reign of the bloody Athelia. 2 Kings 8, 16 to 26. That's the woman that reigned in Jerusalem. If this be true, he's not sure, he's being honest. If this be true, and if the ministry of Job was during the reign of Joash, then Obadiah is chronically first of the writing prophets and the first to use the formula, the day of the Lord. So it's interesting. So if that works out like that, first prophet that uses the day of the Lord is Obadiah. Now Obadiah is written against one group of people. Edom. Edomites. The children of Esau. There's always been a battle with them. There's always been because Jacob sold out the birthright for a mess of pottage. Jacob stole the blessing from dad by you know deceiving dad with the with the meat. So, four years after Jerusalem was burned, Babylon destroyed Edom. And just reading some other notes I got in here. So, let's go on. The vision. Proverbs. 29:18 of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. So there we go. This book is about Esau, about Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her, Edom, in battle. Jeremiah 49, 14 through 16. God's calling for a heathen nation, Babylon. Get up and go. You know, the God that said, you know, thou shalt not kill. They don't understand that God does not put thou shalt not kill when it comes to battle and wars. Behold, I, God, have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thy heart has deceived thee. Pride, Proverbs 6.16. Deceive. Pride, proud, never works with God. It goes against God. It is like mixing oil and water. Deceive. That's a word of Satan. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks. They were in the mountains. They are a rocky area. This is the place where you find Sila, Petra, whose habitation is high, mountainous. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Malachi 1, 2, and 3. The pride. Proverbs 6, 16. They're up in the mountains. They're up in the rocky mountains. They're up in a stronghold. They've got a natural fortress, a natural uh, castle. And with the position they are, they have the right to say, come and get us. And they can there's a passage here with Sailor Petra that can only, they say can only fit a man and his beast. No one else as you walk into this area. They were situated and God said, I've given that land to Esau. There's no problem with Esau. The land is very defensive very good they find in Sailor Petra there's these big rock wells that collect all the rainwater the problem with Esau is he gets pride he gets to be proud he gets 
proud of the the lust of the, excuse me the pride of life. One of those three sins of First John of all the three sins: the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Esau said, "Look who I am." No one's going to defy us. And that's exactly where America has been for the last 20, 40 years. Look at us. No one's going to conquer us. We're the best. We're the champions. That's where Esau is. Though thou exalt thyself as in the eagle. The eagle is the highest creation of God that has life. If I can say it like that. Nothing that has breath, nothing that God created that moves on its own, I mean, outside Satan and his principalities. On this earth, there is nothing that goes as high as the eagle. Now, forget the spaceships and all that other junk. God didn't do that. So when you say as high as the eagle, you're speaking about as far as Obadiah, the dates right, 887 B.C., that's high. There was no Wright Brothers. There was no rockets. The only way you could get as high as an eagle was to climb a mountain. And then the eagle would go even higher than that. So God is stretching beyond man's limit. Say, that is how high you've lifted yourself up. Just like they in Babel. We're going to build ourselves on. We're going to get to the heavens our own power. Look at us. Look how great we are. And though thou set thy nest amongst the stars. Well, that's not true. But let me ask you a question. If you're walking by this land of Esau, and you have me walking by, you see the mountains, and you see the little city up there. It's at night. Wouldn't it look like that that city is amongst the stars on a beautiful, clear night? Wow, look at that. It's right up there in the heavens. Remember, there's no electricity there's no light bulbs it's candles and torches it would be like hey that city is sitting in the heavens that's what it would look like they become that city on a hilltop and they're not not with pride satan fell because of the pride of his beauty there's beauty here you ever see those pictures of celepetra that is a beautiful city it's also very vacant it's very empty. I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. Isaiah 14, 13. Isaiah 14, 15. And when God says he's going to bring you down, they're down. They're gone. Babylon did a good job for, for the Lord. If thieves come to, to thee, it's going to give an illustration. If robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Who's going to help you? What nations are you going to be? They can't come and help you. If those robbers and thieves come to your land, it's going to take a journey. It's going to take a hard time to get right where they are. They're a mountainous terrain. You just didn't get on your two feet and start climbing. They didn't have tanks. They didn't have cars. They didn't have cranes. They didn't have what we have today. And you're in trouble? Who are you going to call? You can't call 911. Would they have not stolen till they had enough? Take everything that you have. All of it. And look for more. If the grape gathers come to thee, would they not leave some grapes? They're not going to get them all. How are the things of Esau, who is Edom, searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, Romans 2, 16. God's judgment sends light. John 3. Men hate the light because they love darkness. Men will leave some, verse 5, but God will not. God will finish the job. 
he will dissolve Edom. He will search them out like he sent those angels into Sodom. Like he came down with the Trinity to look at the Tower of Babel. The eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. There's much evil. All the men of thy confederacy. That's a league. Trying to read my notes here. It's a league. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. All right, you're traveling to out of the rocks. You're out of your protection. They brought you out. The men, and it's about these men, these are not Edomites. These are men that had made a league with the Edomites. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Man, America is there today. All these countries that we are friends with, and they're not. Esau has made friends with nations that are not friendly with them, and they just turn to deceive them. And God has allowed it because of pride. America. America is your modern day Obadiah, except for a few things. And if they do those few things, then it's totally going to be like Obadiah. Have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. Conquered. Won. America doesn't know that she lost. She has no money. She's over a trillion dollars in debt. She's owned by other nations. If China would come to our front door and say, okay, pay the debt. We wouldn't be Americans anymore. We owe everybody. That, I'm excuse me, they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. We feed other nations that will try to destroy us. We are giving money to Iran. We are giving money to the Middle East. And they're in turn going against us all in the name of petroleum. That black God. There is none understanding in him. They have no idea. This is Judas. Judas sat and ate and drank and lived with the Lord Jesus Christ and betrayed him. Here are these people who are, are thought to be friends, thought to be allies, thought to be in bond, and they're not. They're enemies of Esau, but they wine and dine together. America needs to read and study Obadiah. And they don't know nothing. They have no idea what's going on. Just read the notes again. Shall I, God, not in that day, save the Lord, even destroy the wise men, Job 4 1, Jeremiah 49 7, 1 Kings 4 30. The wise men will be the elders out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau. He's just going to get rid of those wise wisdom and he's going to get rid of understanding. The only thing you got left is knowledge. But wisdom is to apply what you know. You ain't got the wisdom that you can know a whole bunch of things. Plenty of people in America today know how to make money, but they sit back and they don't do nothing. And the mighty men, old Teman, that's a city in Esau, shall be dismayed. To the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off 
by slaughter. That's what you butcher. Slaughterhouse. Meat. It's going to be humans. Now, pride. Number one sin. Pride. America. Number one sin. Pride. What is the number two sin? And these two sins, if you were to put them on a scale of one to ten, they would be one and one. I wouldn't know how to rate which is highest. But I can go back in the Bible and show you this one. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Genesis 12. I will curse them that curse thee. Now America hasn't really done that yet. Off and on. The day that America turns her back and goes against the Jew, Obadiah will be 100% for Americans. Esau is doing violence to Jacob. You remember what God said before he called Noah? He said, there is violence in the earth. I'm going to destroy it. There is violence against the children of Israel. Shall The shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off in hell forever. Isaiah 34, 1-10. It is total and eternal destruction for doing harm to Israel. Violence is the pride of of the flesh we've already read the pride of life look where we are look who we are now this is the pride of flesh that was my birthright that was my blessing that was my stomach that was my food that I was supposed to give to dad how dare you Jacob you sir planter I'll tell you when dad dies I'm going to knock your block off I'm going to kill you and God spoke to Rebecca and said you better get that boy out of there and that hatred never ended. You check the date with Genesis in your Bible and you bring it to where we're in Obadiah. It hasn't stopped. Yeah, Esau met Jacob and all that. How you doing? Take this flock. No, I don't want it. Come on, take it. No, I don't want it. They were happy to see each other, but the happiness would not. That's why Jacob said, hey, I'm going another way. You just go. And you're going to realize, you know, you make peace with you, with family and friends like that. They'll get you. Because you're being blessed by God. And they are not. You're getting the mercies of God. And they're getting the raw deal. Jacob was blessed by God. He was a nation above all nations. Esau didn't like it. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, the Jordan River. They crossed their boundary and came into Jacob's land. In the day that the, the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, the Jew, Jacob, and cast lots, John 19, 24, upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. They came into Jerusalem to destroy Jerusalem. They're cast and lost. Well, who's going to get what? Who's going to go where? Well, you know, I, I want to. Who's going to get the sheep? Who's going to get this? All right, shake the dice. Pick the card. The the, the big straw gets it. Uh, number seven, the black ball. And Esau said, "Can I have part of it?" Sure, come on in. Join the game. If anybody is going to mess with Israel, and now remember, Babylon went into Israel, went into Judah and Jerusalem, because God told them, because of their sins, stay out of it. Remember, Babylon got their butt kicked for kicking Israel's butt. Even though God told them to go do it. Now, I've said this before, we went through Jeremiah. 
if if you're a world leader and God comes to you and says, listen, I want you to go do Israel harm. Just say, hey, listen, the Bible says, if I curse them, you're going to curse me. God, all honor to you and who you are. Please find someone else. One of your men in the Bible wrote somewhere, I think a couple of men said, I'm going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. If you can find somebody else to do the job, then I'll pass. God will highly honor you and bless you. But if you walk in there, I'm going to do those Jews harm. Total and eternal destruction as a nation. God is serious about hell and God is serious about his family called Jews. So serious that his son, John chapter 1, was born Jewish of the 12 tribes of Israel, Judah. And he came for his brethren and died on a cross that we may be saved. That's how serious it is. Don't mess with the Jews. If you ever, if you ever get able to preach before the United Nations, I, I'd love to have that day. That's one earthly ministry I would love to have once before I die. They get up and preach before the United Nations. I would have a two-part message, Lord willing, and Lord prayer about it. It would be first, number one, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And number two, you better bless the Jew. That would be the two messages I would give to the United Nations Assembly. But, some buts are bad in the Bible. Thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. This is Esau looking at Jacob. Neither shouldst thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Here's the sin of gloating. Babylon has destroyed Jerusalem. Right, yeah, boy, they got it. Yeah, you got uh, vengeance is mine, says Babylon. You got him good. You're right. Hey, can I get some part of that? I mean, listen, I'm his brother. I get part of that inheritance too. Come on, give it to me. Yay, the Jews have been they're gone. Hallelujah. Have a birthday party. Have a party. Raise a hallelujah. The Jews are dead. That's what Esau is doing. God looks down from heaven, man. He's angry. Like what my pastor said the other day, when he's not mad. He's got all his facilities. He's angry. And he saw them do it. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Look how many Jews we turned over. Look, we stopped them from crossing the river. Look, we took part of it. Look how great we helped Babylon. Be careful how you deal with a Jew. Even an individual Jew. Be careful. And you know what the Bible says about them? They're stiff-necked, they're hard-hearted, and they're just... Which makes you even more. The Bible calls them an enemy because of the gospel. A Jew will hate you because you are a Bible-believing Christian that believes in what's supposed to be their Messiah, which they can't stand. That makes it worse. And yet, Paul said, pray for them. Pray for the peace in Jerusalem. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their... They came in with Babylon. Here comes the troops of Babylon to, to loot and burn and destroy the city, and the Edomites have joined in. Babylon is coming and destroy. Here comes Esau. Hey, can we join you guys? Can we help you? Can we be your ambassadors? Can we be a confederacy with you? Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Lamentations 5, 10 through 12. 
they were loot in Jerusalem after it was destroyed, the Edomites. You know what God said about Babylon? Babylon didn't get nothing from Jerusalem. He sent them to Tyre, I believe it was, to get a payment. But Esau got stuff from Jerusalem. Esau got stuff from Judah. Esau spoiled his brother. Hey, after all, it was for the beans he stole my blessing. It was for the blessing of the of the of the uh, venison. It's mine. It, you ever hear anybody like that? It's Esau. It's mine. All mine. You're full of flesh. You're full of pride. And guess what? God is not on your side. You know what Esau is a type of, in the Bible? He's a type of the flesh. Neither. Look at all the neither. Look what you should have done. Look what you should have not done. Neither should thou have stood in the crossway. That would be the Jordan River or the wilderness. For what? To cut off those of his that did escape. The Jews escaped. They ran. They got out from Babylon, and there was an Edomite. There's an Esau saying, Ah, got you. Come here. Get your butt over here right now. And they would sell them to the Babylonians. Many of the Jews that ended up in Babylon were sent there by the Esau catch, catching them. And maybe even Esau killed them themselves. Do you know who now Esau has been, who is a picture of the future? The Antichrist. He will put a target, he will put a price on the head of a Jew. And there will be Esau's out there say, I'll get him. Bounty hunters. That's one of the great television things these days. But it's not going to be people who broke the law and, and not... And was it skipped out on the prison, skipped out on the court? It's people of the Israel, the children of God. Neither should, neither again, should thou have delivered up those of his, Jacob, that did remain in the day of distress. There were some that remained in the city, like Jeremiah, and they said, Come on, you're going, and would sell them and give them to the Babylonians. And you wonder with some of the girls, young girl, find a pretty Jewish girl, they hand them over to the, you know. They block Israel from escaping. Pride again. Jeremiah 52.2. No, wait, no. Jeremiah 52, 2 Chronicles 36, 2 Kings 25, 1 through 17. Number three of this book. You thought the pride was bad? You thought maybe going against Israel was the worst? For the day of the Lord, uh-oh. We want you to desire the day of the Lord it is not the day of darkness. That's the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. These now become the nations that become the goat nations that would not help Israel. Matthew 25. Obadiah has so much stew in it. There is noodles. There is beef. There is carrots. There is, oh man, spices. It is a good stew to read about past, present, and yet prophecy about the nation of Israel. You dip that spoon in there, you dip that fork in there, oh, yummy. Don't get pride. Mm, that, that, okay, that tastes, that's a little bit of hard taste, but you know what? Okay, Lord, I see what you do with pride. Stay away from it. You, you get maybe you got a little hard potato. Didn't cook all the way. Leave Israel alone. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Got that. Leave him alone. Because maybe like David, God would just rock you to sleep and wake up in hell. For the day of the Lord is near. That was written in 887 B.C. We are 2016 A.D. And God says it's near. I don't think our calendar is right. Upon all the heathen. Judgment. Matthew 25. Calls them heathen. Those who have been against him and his people. As thou hast done. Can't tell if that's an it or if. It shall be done unto thee. Galatians 6, 7. So what's going to happen? Israel is going to turn these Israelites and Edomites to God. And they're going to raid their land. They're going to live in Selfitra during the last seven years of the tribulation period. When the Lord comes. We believe that's the city they're going. That's where Edom lived. Edom built that fortress for Israel to hide from the Antichrist. Great going, God. Isn't God great? Oh, look what we did. Look how wonderful it is. Yeah, goodbye. See you later. Children, bride. Yes, Father. We're in deep trouble down here. Just head down to that city that's already prepared for you. Wasn't it like that when, when they came into the land of, of, of Cana? Wasn't everything prepared for them? Weren't there houses and fields and everything? Yes. So is this land prepared for them. Problem is, no more Edomites. No more East. Just walk on in and do what you need to do. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head, reaping what they sow. And go back and read verses 10 through 14 and see how terrible they treated those Jews and how God will get even more. Think about what they had done planting a little corn in the ground. Okay, one little corn into the ground. How much little corn do you get from one stalk? It's going to be turned on your head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain. Look at that. They went and got drunk in Jerusalem upon Mount Zion. <laughs> Yay, how dry we are. Yay, they're gone. Hallelujah. Pass the beer. 100 Jews on the wall. 100 Jews on the wall. 99 Jews on the wall. Knock the wall down. No more Jews. Hey, pass the beer. You know what's on that holy mountain right now? The dumb and the rock. So shall all the heathen drink continually. Oh, they love that verse. How come I've never had a drunk give me that verse? That's one of the verses they should. Hey, drunk, yeah. there's a verse. A drunkard would love to give you that verse. We're going to drink continually. Revelation 14 10, Jeremiah 49 12. Yay! Who said that? Yeah, has God said. Yeah, has God said. You shall drink continually. Yeah, there you go. You want to be a drunkard? There's a verse for you. Take out content. They shall drink. Oh, no, that's a great one. They shall swallow down. And they shall be as though they have not been. No evidence. Go ahead. Get drunk, eat, drink, and be merry. Who are you? Where are you? What are you? You're going. You know how many families are in desolation because of drink? There is a mother and children somewhere today, and probably maybe father with children somewhere today. They don't even know what happened to their drunkard spouse. Everything's gone. No name. And just dies off. So go ahead, eat, drink. 
There is no hope for Esau. Exodus 17, 14, 16, Isaiah 48, 22, and 57, 2. You know what that verse says about drunkards? There's no hope. Absolutely no hope. Who's going to remember you? A truly godly woman or children may would pray. I mean, what do you say? A truly godly spouse and children may will pray for their spouse involved with that. But in normal sense of life, who would even think about you? Without Jesus Christ as your Savior, what? Nothing. But, here's a good but. See, after all, we ran Obadiah upon Mount Zion. That's where they were getting drunk. That's where the dumb of the rock is. Shall be deliverance. Ooh, it's getting good, isn't it? Deliverance. And there shall be holiness. After the defilement of Esau's doing. If Esau is the type of Antichrist, guess what's going to be happening on the Holy Mountain in the Tribulation? They're going to be drinking, partying. You know, they're going to drink blood. Jewish blood, the Mass. And uh, Moses is going to give them blood to drink. Keep drinking it. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, second advent, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob, not Esau, sorry, shall possess their possessions. And I've been told by a missionary in the Middle East that the schoolrooms maps of the Middle East excludes Israel on their maps. And God sits up in heaven and says, just go ahead, be an idiot. One day I will put Israel on that map and I'll wipe your name off. Won't that be the joke? And the house of Jacob this is the brother. This is the ones they've been against. Thou shalt not have. Thou shalt not have. They should have not. The one that you did against shall be a fire. Zechariah 12, 6. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau, Esau for stubble. Guess who wins? Esau burns up. You know there's a fire in the millennium. Esau goes jump in the flame. Esau ends up in hell. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And get this sentence. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. There's people of Esau right now. After the seventh year tribulation, after the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be absolutely no Esau, no Edomites. And how do you know? Again, for the Lord has spoken it. There's another prophecy we can count upon. You know, he shall be born in Bethlehem. The government should be upon his shoulders. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And Esau shall have no remembering no more. That's, there's a prophecy right there. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau. And that's either that's down by the Dead Sea region. And they of the plain of the Philistines. They shall possess the fields of Ephraim up north and the fields of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess Gilead so they're getting their land back 
in the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites. That's the land of Canaan. There they go. They got it back. Even unto Zarephath. And the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharadr, Genesis 10.30, shall possess the cities of the south. Exactly where Judah is. And the saviors, Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, Notice the S. Shall come upon the Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, Matthew 22, 30. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Amen. Glory. Obadiah never finishes. Does the kingdom of God ever end after the Lord Jesus Christ sits on David's throne? No. It goes off in eternity. Obadiah's book never ends. How's that? You take off from Obadiah verse 21 off right into eternity. New Jerusalem, the new heavens, the new earth, there we are in the millennium. Be careful. Get out of your pride. Be careful. Watch how you treat the Jews. 